What's up, everybody? I just want to come in here before the episode starts and say that I had some audio issues this week, so it's going to sound a little funky. It's going to sound like it's recording from my laptop or my camera because it would not stay hooked up to my microphone. And even though we started that way, it swapped over. So I just want to give you a heads up early in the episode that I do sound a little muffled. I, I did the best I could with the editing, but I hope that you guys will still enjoy the episode. podcast i'm your host resident daryl and tonight it's just me and Kali, where it's just a couple of duos out in the battle royale handling business how you doing Kali? i'm doing good i'm i'm you know i'm happy it's thursday because i always like recording with all my people okay cricket cricket <laughs> as, as you're looking around for the beats yeah unfortunately the other two guys totally sucked and they couldn't make it so, now, Zach, so Zach has been, we were talking, uh, he and I have been talking a lot throughout the week. And um, he's uh, he's working out of town till the 30th of this month. That dude is on assignment till the 30th. And he said that, I mean, obviously he couldn't be on last week because of the um, internet situation. And you know, he actually didn't do like a full blown edited video for our little challenge. He did, well, he did, but he did it like on cell phone. But um, because the internet has been out, at his um, hotel for a week or two. And, um, you know, he obviously uploading a large file and um, yada yada would take a, a million years. And he's using his hotspot on his phone. So we'll give him a pass not being able to make it to our show because of the internets. That's not really why he can't make it though this week. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not saying that is the case why he couldn't make it tonight. Tonight he just sucks. But well, I yes, I think that's why he can't make it tonight. Oh, because he just sucks. Yes, because he did say something about his throat being raw. Oh yeah, he's somehow and not being, having any voice. So about being a little baby. Little you know, Zach. <laughs> well, I mean, from experience, you know, sucking a little too much might cause that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to spell that one out for you. <laughs> I was trying to keep a PG, and you're going all out. <laughs> oh hell uh, no! Everybody, just, I don't know uh, why. You- I don't know why you expect it to be PG and invite me on the show. I know, right? I know. Hey, guys. Uh, well, if you don't mind, just write you know into the Facebook group or Discord. Tell um, Zach two things. Sorry about your butt and sorry about your mouth butt. <laughs> <laughs> what are we even talking about? This is the Loop Rose Podcast. This is your general gaming and uh, slightly comedic podcast. Each and every week we come together. We talk about games. Today, tonight... We got a handful of things to talk about, Kali. Lots of news. Not necessarily news in the gaming industry, but just news with us as the podcast, as our community. Um, I want to give some really special shout outs as we do our toast. You know, each and every week we come together and we crack a can. We do it, we have a, give a toast to something cool, something positive in the gaming world, in our lives, whatever, in the podcast uh, community, what we got going on. And, of course, we always want to give a shout-out to our Patreon supporters, those who go above and beyond to make sure that we do this show each and every week. That would be Sadik. My name is Effing Mayo, MZ Effing Nitro, and Redbeard Effing Rick. Thank you guys so much for all you do. I want to give a shout-out to Tricky and him um, you know, doing his, his duty with Extra Life. I want to give a shout-out to you guys, uh, Kalai, and all those that hung out. I bailed. I got very, very ill. The, that night and uh, well actually let me back it up i was supposed to start originally i was going to do extra life with tricky on the team with tricky instead of against him this year and i took up a vendor spot at a game trade um kind of thing i'll tell you a little more about that in the show later on that was a lot of fun it was really really cool great experience and then i got home hung out with the wife a little bit we all went to dinner and something really nasty happened that made me very ill so unfortunately i wasn't able to make it. I went and laid down like a little baby. 
My little baby boy. My little baby Zach. So, all right. You got anything else you want to toast to? No. Good. All right. Good. Here we go. Oh, man. I wanted to grab me a nice ice cold Celsius. And then I was like, man, this keen lime um, LaCroix is looking real good. Squirt a little bit of lemon, lemonade Mio. This right here, this and this, Kali. I mean, you guys are listening and can't see it in our cameras, but man, this is heaven. You put a little lemonade Mio in a key lime um, LaCroix, and it is amazing. Well, I got the San Pellegrino Italian sparkling drink, and I thought, oh, this is, looks really good. It's blood orange. Yeah, it's got sugar in it, so it's like I'm drinking a soda, so it's really good. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. So here we go in the order of operations. We have got a lot of updates, a lot of things to talk to you guys about. So you guys all know if you listen to this podcast for any amount of time, we do a lot of community stuff. I would dare to say more community stuff than most podcasts. It's borderline obnoxious. So we have. Yes, our... which, by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. You're good. We had an entire discussion on the on the Extra Life stream with Tricky about how the backlog beatdown is unfair, but he doesn't care because if it was his rules, he would do something I don't even remember. Oh, man. And nothing's ever fair for Tricky. If, there, if you listen to his podcast or anything where, where Tricky talks for more than 30 seconds, you'll understand nothing is fair. Even though he gets busted for cheating all the time, he never cheated. There's always some kind of weird, um, there's something going on. There's, there's always treachery afoot with Tricky. It's always something. So I don't take anything Tricky says. Um, you, I believe uh, nothing that I hear and only half of what I see. Cause Tricky Except is that a, we had to have the, the entire discussion on why Alex should not get two points for doing the DLC for Shovel Knight. Because if you play Shovel Knight, it's not like it's like, oh, with this DLC, you'll be able to like, you know, do this little tiny storyline. No, you have to replay the entire game again with a different character. And it gets harder. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Tricky sucks. We'll just we'll <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So I don't know. I don't know what to say about old Tricky. He did he does good by the kids on the extra life. But when it comes to the competitions He's a bit of a turd. So that's about all I got. So, all right. We do the backlog beatdown. We're going to give our updates here in a little while. We do a custom leaderboard for Xbox, um, PlayStation, and sometimes occasionally very randomly Steam. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, we are working together with a group of, of, of guys. I announced it in last week's podcast in the post um, script, the stuff that I added after we have recorded. But... Uh, Carl Wakefield, one of the community members, he's in the Discord, and he is in um, the Facebook group. He is uh, hosting a trophy competition for the for the autumn season. All right, and there is a cash or PSN rather. There's prizes. There are, there's actual money for winning this thing, and he gives updates to us periodically on a spreadsheet. I don't have this week's update, so basically, what I'll do is I'll update like every other episode. Um, just by the nature of when he does everything, he he updates on Sundays. We record on Thursdays, so maybe if I haven't edited this by thir by Sunday, I'll come in and, and and edit out what I'm about to say right now. But either way, um, definitely go if you want to join. Um, just reach out in the Discord group, in the Facebook group. Just all you gotta do is post a comment. We'll see it. Tag me in. Tag Kalia. We'll get you in the right spot. Get you added to that spreadsheet. It's a pretty cool time. I announced last week that I'm getting my butt totally waxed right now. I am really sucking it up, but it is all good. So we are definitely partnering up with him and at least, you know, as far as partnering, we're not sponsoring the prizes, but we're at least going to talk about the competition each and every week. So definitely if you want to be a part of that and you haven't signed up already, join the Autumn Trophy Hunting Competition. Um, it's a fun time. There's a nice little messenger group that I'm a part of, and the guys are in there kind of cheering each other on and being pretty positive. I love seeing stuff like that. Um, we also have, I've been posting it in the comments of each of the podcasts, but depending on the platform I launch it on, sometimes the links don't always work. And I don't know. Sometimes I just kind of like, you know what? It is what it is. I have launched a brand new Facebook group 
um, called South Carolina Video Game Exchange. Now, obviously, a lot of our listeners aren't in South Carolina, but there's a handful. I was going to say, it doesn't sound like I can be a part of this group. First of all, second of all, was I even invited to this? I haven't invited you, but I'm talking about now. If you would like to be a part of it, I'll definitely add you. Um, You don't have to be in South Carolina to exchange games with us, but what I'm trying to do is I'm partnering up with local vendors, local collectors, okay, and local game shops, and I'm trying to get an actual video game buy, sell, and trade group going on. I'm actually going to add you to it right now, Clyde. In South Carolina, to kind of like provide a place and a way for people to come together and do, you know what I'm saying? Some, some game trades and, you know, maybe I have something that you've been looking for. Maybe you have something that I've been looking for and we kind of work together. Now, obviously in this group, I just added you, Clive. Uh, while I'm at, I'm going to add, add Zach and Joe already. Why not? So, um, but what we can do is you can always, you know, trade, set something through messenger, ship to each other, whatever. Um, but either way, what I wanted to do is I wanted to set something up to where we can coordinate hangouts and group, you know what I'm saying, meetups, whatever, trades, things of that nature, and sales stuff. And so uh, basically what I have done is that there's not really an active group you know, that we could find on Facebook. And a lot of the store owners around here said that, hey, you know, there's not really anything good. So I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll create something. I'll add you guys to it. And then slowly but surely I'm adding the local um, game stores. I don't want to just add every single one of them and have these guys in there hawking up all my good deals. So, but in the same respect, I want to be able to work with these people. So I was a vendor at a event. There is a, a, a business. It's one of those overstock bin stores. And uh, the guy that owns the place is named Stephen Hennessy, really nice guy. He uh, reached out and was like, hey, if you guys want to be a vendor, I'll give you a $25 in-store credit to come set up outside my shop from 10 to 4, the day of Extra Life, and buy, sell, and trade video games. He promoted it on Facebook. We had vendors come down from Charlotte. It was an awesome, awesome time. We did get kind of rained out in the beginning, so the turnout wasn't crazy great, and a lot lot of the vendors bailed. But we were able to get under a covered area, and it stopped raining by the time we got there. So that was cool. Um, well, I mean, drizzle a little bit, but I mean, realistically, you know, uh, being that it was an outdoor event, it was, I, I see why a lot of people didn't make the make the the jump. But I was able to sell a few things. I was able to trade some stuff. I got some excellent, excellent Vita games. I met some really cool people, and it was a awesome, awesome time. Definitely got me really hyped up to do more stuff like that. Um, to get more in the buy, sell, and trade, and create this kind of community. And so. We were all standing around. It's like, yeah, there's groups in Charlotte. There's groups in Georgia and stuff like that. But there's not really anything in South Carolina that's very active, you know? And uh, everyone was kind of like, do you, do you know of a group? Do you know of a group? I'm like, well, no, not really. Let's just make one. So that's what I did. I created a group. I started adding people to it. There's only like 30 or so, 40 people in there right now. But I just made it. So definitely, if you're listening to this and you want to buy, sell, and trade with the Loot Bros and, you know, kind of, organize and hang out definitely get in that group we'll be posting up our stuff my brother's been going through his retro collection and anything that he's thinking at all about getting rid of he's posting in there he's got some really excellent stuff man it's really cool and then he and i were able to trade some stuff back and forth just a couple items that i really need to get i'm actually going to make a video i challenged my uh, zach and i've been talking about making more youtube content and so i've challenged myself to do a video a month like an actual video a month, and I I did the grail I did the uh, the grail video for October, so I'm going to do another one for November, and I'm going to kind of focus on some of these big pickups that I do. We're gonna my kids and I are doing a little bit of like uh, yard selling and flea marketing, so we're doing like the you know the body cam footage where you go. I don't know if you've watched any of those before, Kali, but they're awesome. There's some really great YouTubers out there that strap a camera a GoPro on their chest and they go thrifting and they go to flea markets and yard sales and they find crazy stuff. So, uh, but we're going to be messing around, you know, playing around doing some of that stuff. And it's been, it's been a good time. So if you're, if you're listening to the show and you've never gone to our YouTube, go check out the YouTube. Uh, we're posting content on there. Um, I posted a, the month of November challenge video uh, for myself. Zach and I have a, have kind of an ongoing thing now where we're going to do a challenge every single month to go and find video games in the wild. 
anyone listening to the show right now can participate. Kali, you can participate. Joe, you can participate. I mean, if you're if you're there, Joe. And uh, so what we're doing is this. So for this month of November, the challenge is to find the most valuable game in the wild for a dollar. Now you can, let's say I buy a game, Kali. Let's say I buy Halo 2, which I did. I bought Halo 2 uh, Wednesday. Let's say I buy Halo 2 for a dollar, and I trade that for Halo 3. And then I trade Halo 3 for Halo 4, Halo 4 for Halo 5. Or you own a t- trader for the Steelbook version. You can trade up. And as long as you document that through either Facebook Messenger groups, you know, something that you can track, you know what I'm saying, screenshot, screen grab, whatever, or actual live footage, then it counts for the challenge. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so Zach and I have the $1 challenge going for the month of November. So who can get the most valuable game? And we base value off of things like price charting, eBay comps, things like that. Who can get the most valuable game for a dollar? And in the, uh, it's like a little two minute video that I made. I don't know if you watched it, Kali, but I found a PlayStation 2 at the flea market for a dollar. I saw that. Isn't that crazy? I got a Nintendo 64 for three bucks and it works. You could never find that up here. See, that's the problem that me and Joe are from the land of New Jersey and New York where we know the value of our crap. Dude, the bad thing was, is all the resellers were out and they missed it. And um, I don't know if you ever heard of the YouTuber, Harry Tornado. Um, he's got like three hundred. No, but that sounds that sounds like a porn star name. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Definitely, definitely not. Quite the opposite, actually. Um, but uh, he does the body cam footage where he goes around and does all the yard selling and thrifting, and he resells on eBay, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And he had already gone through. We actually talked for a little while out there, and he had already gone through, and he missed the Nintendo sixty four. It was crazy. This dude was like, he, I, I, I was, I expected twenty or thirty dollars. He was like, man, give me three bucks. I was like, dude, <laughs> done. I want to give a shout out to our good friends James. He's been uh, interacting in the group a good bit. He and I, me, uh, my brother Cray, and James, we went out and we went, um, we all went, you know, hanging out and uh, flea marketing together Wednesday morning, and had an absolute blast. But I felt bad because. I kept scooping up deals in front of him, and like I got the PlayStation Two for a dollar. Now, granted, the PlayStation Two, I think there's something wrong with my power supply because it's not staying on. But then also, my personal PS Two Slim isn't working either now, so I think I got the wrong power supply plugged up. So I can't say it works yet. It turns on, but it doesn't stay on. But then again, my other one's not working right either, and I know for a fact it works. I just played the Punisher on it, so. I think I got the wrong power supply, but I can't find the right one. So I think I might have accidentally thrown it in a bag when I sold my Wii U. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. So I got to get another PS2 Slim power supply to make sure that I test it out correctly. But the Nintendo 64 worked, and I was super stoked about that. That was awesome. So I found that in a while. I picked up a bunch of $1 games. Anyways, my point in saying all this is this. Zach, you're going to lose again. I spanked your behind in the October Spooky Game Challenge. Kalai, did you watch that video? No, I haven't had time. I'm sorry. Oh, so you know, so check it out. <clears throat> I so Zach said find you know a the most valuable horror game for under twenty dollars. That was the challenge. So I found Haunting Ground on PS2 for ten dollars. And I got it off marketplace. I drove three hours, you know, hour and a half there, hour and a half back to pick it up. And it is just the disc alone was going on eBay for 200, like bids were up to $281. The booklet had sold in the past 90 days for, for 89 bucks. The empty case alone sold for 160. And typically that game was going for about three to 400 bucks. So it's crazy. I got such a super, super steal. But I spanked him um, this past month. So, yes. So anyways, I say all that to say this. I'm inviting everyone in the community to be a part of it. So just because we have this challenge going on, and that's something we're going to talk about back and forth on the show each and every week, doesn't mean that you guys can't participate. But you got to film it. you got you got you got to make a video. you got to post it in the group. I don't care if you post it to your YouTube first and then you post it. I don't care if you stream it in the group. But you got to put it in the group, whether you put it in the Discord or you put it in the Facebook group. you got to post it. So if you're going to participate and you're going to challenge us, you're going to roll with us and try to see who can... If you can beat out the the, the podcast host, feel free, but you got to you got to video it, okay? So, Kali, I think that's it. So, yeah, I talked a little bit about extra life. Are you ready for my story now? Or you want me to wait till later? 
Yeah, you can tell your story now. It's really gross. Um, I've probably seen worse. And probably, but here's what it is. So you know how Tricky's got this phobia of spiders? Yeah. So I've got something similar, but for roaches. That makes so sense. That they're nasty. I think you told I think we've determined that before. They're gross. Because, that that they gross me out. Okay. Yes, because didn't there wasn't there an Xbox with roaches in it, I want to say? Yeah, yeah, something that yeah. Was, uh, so check it out. So we're doing E2M, okay? I am still hovering that 53 pound mark since 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 May. So I've lost 53 pounds, but I can't I just can't break. I'm really really having a bad time plateauing. So each week we do our cheat meal, okay? Last week on Extra Life, we decided to go get pizza as a family. So we go to a CC's Pizza. The one down by our house is usually pretty clean. We go in there and the ice is messed up or whatever, so they're taking and they're they're putting buckets of ice into the top of the machine. Mm-hmm. So, um, we go. I, I got to get refill my drink, and I take the top off, and I just drink my whole drink. And lining the inside of my cup are roach legs. That's so, right. The protein. No, but yeah. Wait, <laughs> that's really why you couldn't make it. Oh my gosh, I was sick to my stomach. So, I mean, like, I don't typically get, like, nauseated or grossed out or you know, whatever. I'm telling you, I was green. It made me, I didn't throw up, but, dude, it was everything. I, I sat there and I was like, I was so freaking disgusted. And where were you eating at? Uh, CeCe's Pizza. See, I'll never eat there again. I'll that's never why I never, there. like, eat at these. I don't can't. I can't even do fast food. Like, I don't get it. If you're going to have a cheat meal. Why would you have fast food or like pizza? Why wouldn't you go for like a nice steak with a nice red wine? Maybe with like, you know, we, we did that already. We, we t- each week would do something different. And we were like, oh, man, let's go get just some nasty, sloppy buffet pizza. But that was kind of like that. Was, let's go get it. Not to mention we had, we had, we had extra we had two extra kids with us. So my, my son had a kid spend that with him, and my youngest son had one of his buddies spend that with him. So we already we were feeding seven instead of five. So I was like, eh, we can go have steaks. We can go to Longhorns or a nice steak restaurant and spend 200, 250 bucks and then watch these kids not even eat their steaks. Or we can go spend $40 <laughs> and eat some roaches. It was so <laughs> nasty. I'm telling you, I was sick to my freaking stomach. I was so disgusted. I was like, I went home and I was like, man, I'm a hurl. Like it just, I couldn't, it was so weird too. Cause like I felt in the back of my throat, I felt like, like something was there. You know what I'm saying? And like, it wasn't, <laughs> it was in my head. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So I went and I like, I like laid down and I was like, man, I was messaging back and forth with you guys. I was like, I don't know, man, I'm not feeling great. I was like, I'm gonna lay down. Cause I kept feeling, I was like, I'm gonna throw up. Like I just couldn't get it out of my head. Well, and it's, I, it's, I and you know what, but it was for the kids and the sad part is, I bet you if you came and hung up out with us, you probably would have forgotten and felt better because we were like arguing about, you know, we the what was going on. Now we met this nice person who listens to trophy whores, and of course we did tell him uh several times, and including when Tricky left to actually go do something. He's like, I'll be right back. Joe's like, Okay, if you really want a good podcast, you gotta come go listen to the uh oh, trophy so horse. Uh her name was uh Felicia. That's so we told Felicia she needs to come join us, and apparently Felicia is one of the top trophy hunters. What? Yeah, it was really, uh, really crazy. But she hasn't been playing in the last year because she said she was kind of getting tired of playing the doing this trophy hunting. He, she goes, there's just so many games that I was, you know, that were coming out for the year. And it was just crazy. I couldn't, you know, I, I all I would do is playing these rat plats and these little spam yeah. games, and it just burnt him, her out. I'm sorry, burnt her out. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I hear that a lot. A lot of a lot of the top trophy hunters have said that. That it just and the thing is, is in order to keep your place on the leaderboard, you have to play them. Like if you spent, I'll use CJ as an example. CJ spent all this time and money. I mean, it costs a lot of money to keep up with this stuff. But you spend all that time beating and platinuming all these games, and then this wave of rat spam starts coming out. 
And it's like, okay, I can give up all the years that I spent to get to be number one because, I mean, let's face it, CJ is the number one trophy hunter in Australia, and he stays number one because... Really? I didn't realize he was the number one trophy hunter. Dude, he, yeah, he's the number one trophy hunter in Australia, and he's like, he ranges between 40 and 60 in the world. Like, CJ is no joke. But that's why he has to play the rat spam because you got to, if you don't, everyone else will. So, for example, me, I was like 700 something, 700 something on trophies. And then I haven't done any rat spam this year. And I think I just fell into the 900s. And it took me forever to get just, you know, to break the top thousand. Well, whatever yeah. next year's backlog is going to be, we're going to have to really be careful because Trick is shit saving all of that spam. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're not counting spam, so. Booyah. Yeah, so I'm 904 now. So it's like, you know, I mean, 904 is not great, you know. Excuse me, that's in the country. That's, in, that's not in the world. I'm 4,490 in the world now. Yeah. And so... I mean, it sucks because, like, it took me forever to break that top thousand in the United States. And then, you know, I get to 700 and something. And then now it's like, well, just by, by sheer nature of not getting spam trophies, I'm still getting trophies. I got a platinum last night. But it just ain't, it ain't, you, you got to keep up. I mean, if you want to, if you want that spot on the leaderboard, you got to play it. You're kind of forced into it. And so I hear a lot of trophy hunters are like, man, these games suck. The amount of them that come out sucks. And if I don't freaking do this, then I lose all the progress and everything I put into this for the past several years. I know, but like to me, that doesn't seem fun. It just it doesn't seem fun. Like I want to play my games to play games, not because I have to or I have to buy all this stupid spam. And reality is, how much money are they spending every single day to keep up with that? I mean, a lot. I mean, think about how many of these games come out. And they're you know anywhere from a dollar to five bucks a piece. Yeah. Not to and, mention the the full the big games that they actually want to play. I know. I don't even know how time they have time to play the big games. And on top of that, um, I was like, gonna, I was going to say something. Oh, they're pro, and they're only. It's like a snowball. The more they buy to get to that first place, the more that these little rat plats and these terrible games are just going to come out. I mean, I actually, no. rat plats is bad because I actually like them. They actually take. They actually look for indie developers and publish them, but right. like there are games on the on the store that are just terrible, and they're feeding off this. I need to be number one. Yep, yep, that's exactly what it is. They're taking advantage of people. So. But in the same respect, it's like it's a good business model. It's like if you if you know what I'm saying, like if you know, I would make a game right now if I had access to make a game or I had the wherewithal, the know how to make a game, I would make a game right now. And cash in on the easy trophy stuff, hundred percent. But it's kind of like I know there's a market for that, and so you can put out a shovelware game, a middleware game, and because there's such a market to stay as number one, somebody will buy your game. Yeah, you know, hundreds of somebody's are going to buy your game just so they can stay in their position. So it is a bit of, I mean, it's kind of messed up, but you know, it is what it is. So yes, what I. I hear that. I mean, and it does. It ruins it for people. Now, I will say this. I'm almost a full year. I'm 11, 11 months of no spam. And outside of playing My Name is Mayo 3, I don't know that I'm going to go back to it. You know? Like, I mean, unless I do a trophy competition or something, and I need to do a spam game to complete a certain objective, I'm, I mean, I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed playing these bigger games and enjoying playing whatever I want. So and eat every night, see, and this is another thing too, since I've switched careers and I'm not so physically tired at the end of the night, I stay up till, you know, I'm saying 12, 31 o'clock playing my Vita every night. And so I'm getting crazy Vita Platinums right now. I just platinum two Lego games back to back. That's like 70 hours. That's nice. It is. I platinum Lego Batman 2. Which I guess what I'll do is I'll pivot into what we've been playing. And since I mentioned it, I'll go first. I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima and Lego Batman 2. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing I've been playing. I turned on my PS2. So I got... I wish... I can't... Pull, I'm not going to pull my camera over there. So beside me, I've got my fat PS2. And I've got two Slims. My fat PS2 is modded. 
It's got the hard drive built into the back and the boot disk, so you can download your games to the console and then you use the boot disk to switch between them. So what I do is I took all of my rare horror games, I downloaded them to the console, I deleted all the other stuff that I had on there 20 years ago. And I just put my rare horror games on there. And then I was like, you know what? If I want to play some Silent Hill, I can just play Silent Hill. If I want to put Haunting Grounds in, I can put Haunting Grounds in. If I want to play Obscure, I can play Obscure. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show my son these older games, my oldest. Mm -hmm. And since we're, we're doing a little bit of survival horror games together, like I'm just, let's go. Let's play through them. So it's been really, really cool. I have, we haven't played any. I just put them in, tested them out, make sure they downloaded, make sure they work. And then I watched, like, I was working the other day, and I had Silent Hill for the room on, and I was just watching that intro video for, like, three or four hours, just kind of cycled through whatever. But it was cool. Lego Batman 2 officially knocked out. I got the Platinum last night. I added it to the um, to the Backlog Beatdown sheet. I immediately rolled over and downloaded um, Lego Movie. I'm... I had already started that game. I'm like halfway through on the missions. So that was one of those games that like I was almost finished and my memory card died. So I never, you know, I was like, I'm not going back. Well, that was a couple years ago. I'm ready to go back now. I'm going to knock it out. And that's me. I, not, a, not a ton on there. I'm still playing Ghost of Tsushima. I am at the, I'm in Act 3, the mission Kill the Con. So I'm pretty close to the end. So, but. That's where that's me. I'm just kind of chipping away, and I'm gonna get the platinum in Ghost of Tsushima. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Resident Evil 8 DLC came out, the um, Shadows of Rose. I didn't even buy it yet. Wow. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait until I beat Ghost because if I if I don't, I'll just jump into into that, and then I'll just play Resident Evil. And I'm only two trophies away from the platinum in Resident Evil. So then, if, once I start playing it again, I'm gonna get like I'm gonna nail down Mercenaries mode. Um. And I really want to get the platinum in that game to be my number 400. And I am at 372. So I got a little ways to go. So I don't need to play it right now. So I figure if I platinum goes to Tsushima, I'm only a couple trophies away from 100%ing Resident Evil Reverse. So that's pretty cool. And then, um, you know, yeah. So I'm just going to chip away. And then my, my goal was to platinum every LEGO game on the Vita. So that's kind wow. of... That's hundreds of hours. It is. Uh, yeah, let's see. So what have you been playing? Well, I've been playing a lot of Marvel Snap. I actually paid $10 for the season pass, not realizing it, it was ending in three days. So I went literally on a three-hour bender to get through most of the season pass. I think uh -huh. I'm, I missed it by one. Uh, they give you, like, little um, goals or, you know, I want you to hit that goal, like, you know, I can't even think of the name. I'm tired. I don't know. <laughs> so then I had to buy the season pass again because the new season pass came out and it's uh, Wakanda forever. So I've been working on that. Um, I haven't been doing much because uh, Jim's been kind of sick, so I've been taking care of a lot of him. Of course, I did hang out with the extra, and I also was hanging out with the extra life people trying to help them stay awake. The Thank only you know. other game that I've been playing, and I'm hoping to do an in depth review for our channel, is called This Way Madness Lies. Okay. If, have you heard of Cosmic Star Heroin? I have. It's from that ma the maker of Car the Cosmic Star Heroin. The game comes out, it comes out on the 11th. We're recording on the 10th, so it comes out tomorrow. Uh, I got a preview copy to review. Heck yeah. It's not a it's not a very long R, uh, JRPG, and I'm hoping um, that I can 100% it because if it does come to PlayStation, I know that that's what a lot of our members want to do. They're going to want to actually, you know, right. platinum it. Uh, it is a magical girl JRPG like Sailor Moon set in. Um, a Shakespearean world. Which I kind of was like, oh my god, I cannot wait to play this. Because I'm a big fan of Sailor Moon. In the world, there are four girls at a uh, little academy. And they can transform. And they go into these Shakespearean worlds. Where they fight monsters. And everybody talks in Shakespearean. But 
They have a Shakespearean to Z Boyd, the um, makers of the game translation, which was tra- which he did say that his daughter helped come up with the dialogue for a lot of the stuff. So it makes it even more fantastic on dialogue. The dialogue is amazing, especially the translations. I think at one point something translated to that man is cray cray. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I've been really enjoying that. If you've got a Steam account, you might want to check it out. But you know what I did, Kawhi? I'm, I'm gonna jump in real quick because you mentioned Steam. There is a survival horror game that I bought that I followed and posted in the group for gosh, six, eight months to a year maybe before it came out, called Crying Is Not Enough. It's a Resident Evil, Evil Within, Silent Hill style game. Mm-hmm. I went and and so I've turned one of my um I've turned one of my storage rooms in my basement into my eBay area where I'm staging up all my eBay stuff. I've been buying and selling and trading a bunch, and that's where I package everything. That's where I'm storing all my boxes, my supplies, and everything. But I've got these I've got these shelves with these bins in there, and um, I went and got my controller out. So that my wire, my Xbox 360 wire controller, so that I could uh-huh. get up to my PC. I'm gonna put Steam back on here, and I'm gonna play that game. But anyway, I just thought. Didn't you get rid of Steam saying you'd never play it again? I did, and now here I am going. You know what? There's some games out there that I haven't played yet. I'm also building a PC with my brother, so it's kind of like eventually, eventually. Oh, nice. What did, what have you gotten so far? A lot of uh, old stuff that Tanner had. Um, it's a build that my brother made using essentially old PC parts that Tanner had and then some stuff they added, but it needed a power supply and a fan. And so I bought a power supply and a fan and then now it was working. It's so weird. The power supply in it, we took out, put in my sister-in-law's PC and it, it worked. We took it out. We put that in hers. It worked. I bought the same power supply put it in doesn't work take it out put it in hers it works so the power supply works but the pa- that power supply in this pc doesn't work but the power supply we pulled out from that pc works so yeah, but how, how much are you spending on this thing i've only spent like 100 110 dollars so far just because everything already exists it's just stuff that they had recycled it's not gonna be anything great but Ooh, give me a what, i don't remember what, what's in it i don't remember oh Darn. It's not terrible. It's better than what I got. I've got a the I've got the NVIDIA 1050 in my laptop right now. And I've got a either 512 or a one terabyte SSD. And I've got 16 gigs of RAM. It's better than that. I think it's got 24 or 32 gigs of RAM, a decent-ish motherboard, a decent-ish graphics card that's a little bit better than what I've already got. But I don't remember. Because I did post that really nice PC. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That pre-built. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the pre-built, you know, because everybody's like, well, I could do it cheaper. (laughs) Of course they did. (laughs) (laughs) Bunch of nerds. (laughs) I know. The whole point was that's an easy build. And I don't think $1,300 for for a computer is a bad price, especially with those specs. You're getting a 3080 in there. Right. I don't know if you could build it cheaper, but you know, it's also got labor. Not and everybody can understands or wants to learn how to build a PC. Well, it's like it. me. It's like me. I I'm not going to do it. I don't have the patience for it. I don't want to do it. My brother, who's built a few already, was like, "Yeah, we'll just throw some parts in there. This will be quick and easy." And then it's not working. Okay, we'll take that part out and put it in a different PC. Oh, it works now. So then we'll put it back. Oh, it's not working. So like it's just the, it's the it's that stuff. It's the trial and error. It's the it is it's a it. shame too because I think my old PC is up for sale right now. Oh really? Yeah. Um, I gotta see. I'll I'll have to see if it's still up at the auction. Um. Heck yeah. Well, I'm not like I said. I'm not. You guys know me. I'm not trying to do anything crazy. But what I wanted to do was I wanted because the way my desk is set up, I've got. Uh, 32 inch. It says actually said 42 when I just brought it up, but on the the capture card, or the you know the graphics card says it's a 42, but I'm positive it's 32. I got 27 right here, and then I've got the laptop. What I wanted to do was t- get this space back, okay? Put the tower underneath the table, 
and then put three 27s. Like, I've got three 27s in my office at work, and I freaking love it. I love it. So I wanted to do three like that on my desk and give myself some more real estate because I'm always, I'm always so, many, uh, so much crap at one time that I'm using. Not to mention for editing, and I've been um, applying for like audio editing jobs. Really? To do on, to do on the side. I really want to, I really, really, really want to do audio editing for like, I'm not saying I want to do it full time, but I definitely want to do it as a part time gig because I, I do enjoy doing it. Um, and it would be, It'd be much better if I was getting paid for it. <laughs> so um, I want to start picking up contract work. And I've already kind of been applying for jobs and kind of working on that. So in my head, I'm like, if I do a little bit of that stuff, plus I'm starting to dabble with video more. So I need something more powerful and then they can render while I work. See, when I start, when I render video on this thing, that's it. It's, it's my computer is pretty much out of commission. So if I need to enter a contract in for a loan, flip through multiple menus and multiple screens while I'm trying to render, I mean, this thing is just like chugging. So I do need more power. So that's why I'm kind of like, I'm just going to buy this off. Well, I'm going to finish the PC my brother already started, and then I'll upgrade from there. We'll see. It might get me. You never know. I might be a PC nerd before you know it. Yeah. What you could do, like, if you really wanted to learn, which you could learn, you're learning audio editing and stuff. If you really wanted to learn, if you think about this, I could see you like playing Resident Evil on a PC and having your mind blown because, first of all, the graphics would be amazing. Second of all, if you learn to mod, you can mod all kinds of crazy stuff, and yeah. I could see you enjoying that. We'll see. I'm closer now than I've ever been. If my PC was up and running, if we, if it would just was working then I would already be there. And again, I've got like a vision for what I want all of this to, to look like and, and function and how I want it to function. So um, not to mention, I need to take this TV in front of me because I don't want to go buy another one. Um, this one has all the, everything I need. I want to take it, put it in the basement for my retro stuff so that I can plug and play and test out stuff and have all my retro stuff hooked up. Um, because this is an actual TV I'm using. This is a 27 inch 1440p monitor. And then that's my laptop screen. So I just got kind of like a random array of things in here. So I want to tighten it up. But, anyways, is that all we've been playing? <laughs> we've been doing a lot of rambling tonight. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Oh. <laughs> it's like a good old Loot Bros hangout tonight. <laughs> but so, just the two of us. That's right. That's right. Because everybody else sucked. So, all right, well, then let's do this. Let's get into the leaderboards, the backlog beatdown, all that stuff. We'll knock out our community questions, and then we'll see what kind of time we got. That all right, Kalai, me. we're going to jump into the Xbox leaderboards first. In the first place, we got I'm Styling On Your Bro with 5,920 achievement points. Uh, his last achievement was in Lake. Have you ever heard of the game Lake? No, but I just updated his spreadsheet and I did see that he played that and he did say something about it. it was he would probably never play it again. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. He always finds games to play that just I'm like I've I've never either never heard of it or I'm like why would you why would you sink so much of your life into it? Yeah, Did he also he? just played B Simulator. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the the puns in the in the Discord were amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. So, um, next up, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh man, <laughs> uh, I have an announcement to make. Uh, so we have a new pledge in. I have been pledged. Uh, our good friend and Patreon producer, uh, Redbeard Rick, has pledged me to play South Park, The Stick of Truth. That's an amazing game, though. That's what I, that's what I hear. He said, definitely don't play in front of the kids. <laughs> no, do not play in front of the kids. Oh, man, that's awesome. So, yeah, I don't see where um, Static has emailed anything in, so I just want to make sure. Um, so. 
Mm, did you put me back on? Uh, everybody, Kala's back on. I know, and you know what? I found my missing controller so I can go back to trying to play. Because yeah, when yeah. do I have to finish that game? Just Dance 2022. I'll have to look. I've got a spreadsheet with that stuff on there, and uh, I'll have to look. Yeah, let me know, because uh, I know. Because, oh, apparently I found out that, I don't know if I told you or not, I might have. I have two, I have, they think I have two torn meniscus, and Oof. I'm going to need surgery to not be in pain. So who, okay. pled, who pledged me that? Uh, that was uh, MZ F and Nitro. I thought it yeah. wasn't MZ. Yep, it was MZ. MZ got you both. He got you both times. Oh, okay. Yep. Freaking little hater. All right, check it out. So we got second place GDI Master Ace with 337 achievement points. He's playing some Persona 5 Royale. Third place is Sadik with 230 achievement points. He's playing Vampire Survivors. Fourth place is Redbeard Rick with Slay the Spire. Oh, he started it over on Xbox so he can get the achievement points now. Oh, wow. That's really funny because didn't he say that he was so happy when he was done the, the, the platinum? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like his proudest platinum. So I think he's going to get 100%. It. So good on you, Red. All right. And then in fifth place, the bearded nerd playing some Spike. Unfortunately, he hasn't had the internet to play lots of other games. So. In uh, the, on the Loot Bros True Trivies leaderboard, in first place, we have Affectatious Donk with 2,190 trophies. Playing some Frogo 3. I don't know what Frogo 3 is, but I got to imagine it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> this is listen to the drop 2,190 trophies. Second place, Hollow Madcap with 30. <laughs> He was playing some Hybroxia 2, which is really good. I, I quite I quite enjoy the game. Third place, the Grounded Gamer with 24 playing the Ascent. Fourth place, Tricky Mick playing some Gotham Knights. He got the platinum on Extra Life. So good on you. Oh uh, then- yeah, which by the way, his his extra life started off boring because I, I, I tuned into his extra life and guess what he was playing? The division. Yes. And I was like, why are you playing the division? This is boring. I wouldn't even like I wouldn't even like put money on it uh, I, I wouldn't even give him money until he stopped playing that game but he's like i have an event and i waited till the last minute and i gotta play it now i'm like are you kidding me nobody wants to see the division yeah what a turd sandwich and then he said I, he was waiting for you to play gotham knights but then well, he felt bad that he was playing it without you well he didn't feel too bad because originally he said this was the deal he said we're, he he called me he was like, hey let's play gotham knights together for extra life I'm like, awesome, we'll do it. Well, then he's like, man, I'm having a real hard time waiting to play it on Extra Life. And I told myself, well, I didn't even buy it yet. I'm going to wait until Extra Life because I didn't want to buy it and then just have a brand new game sitting there, not using it. I'm like, I'll just buy it right you know, the day before or something. And I was going to buy it digitally, even though I hate buying digital games, especially full price digital games. But I was going to have my son play it with us yeah so if i buy it digital he can play it i can play it mm-hmm. so i was like okay so i already had the plans and my my son was on board he he was gonna stay up all night with us and play and a couple days beforehand tricky's like hey i'm jumping into the two gotham knights he already beat the game before extra life i was like well i'm not even gonna buy it right now then i'll just wait till black friday it'll be 20 dollars cheaper you know, I mean, I just, I mean, that's ridiculous because I'm not going to jump into the game for the first time when you've already beat it. I was like, we can just play. So we talked about just playing the division. He's going to carry me through DC. I was like, cool, that's fine. Well, then, you know, extra life rolls around him platinum the game. So I'm really glad that I didn't I didn't wait and I didn't do all that. So being that I'm still in the middle of this game, we already got the the next game club game. Looks like it's going to be you know ready to go any day. I just got pledged another game. I'm glad I didn't buy Gotham Knights yet. I'll wait and save 20 bucks. So, uh, let's see. Where are we at? Are we still on the uh, leaderboard? I didn't ring my mouth so long. Steigen Wolf in fifth place with 21 uh, trophies. Playing some Max Payne. Good freaking choice. Good choice. Um, and then I'm, a, I'm actually in ninth place. <laughs> I got nine trophies, but they were all in the Batman. That was me finishing up my platinum. 
So it kind of sucked because I had been grinding on that game for so long. And the last two trophies were the platinum, obviously. But then technically the, the last two trophies not included in the platinum were beating this arena mode. And the combat's not great on Lego Batman 2. The combat's gotten so much better on the more recent games. But you have to beat this arena mode. So you got to beat all five levels. But then you got to beat it with a gold, with a, like a gold Lego trophy, which means you basically can't die. And <laughs> none of the red bricks will, are, are, are usable during that. So it's super, super frustrating because like I would get all the way to the last, le- last, you know, it's eight rounds each level. I get all the way to round eight and I die enough times to kick me into a, a silver. I'm like, ah, oh. I got like four hours into that arena mode. And then I learned, oh, all you got to do is grab and throw people. And the ones that won't let you grab them, you punch them, then you grab them and throw them. So it's kind of a cheap way of getting through it. But I was like, man, I was doing it the hard way. So got that platinum working on Lego, the movie now. Pretty stoked. So, all right. And uh, do you want to jump into our backlog beatdown? Sure, I have it up. I have, I'm styling on you, bro. Is that 158? <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad he joined our competition because I've never seen numbers like this in the past couple of years we've done this. CJ is 102. So is Diego. Redbeard Brick is at 99. Uh, He's got 99 problems and a plat ain't one. Boom! (laughs) Uh, Daryl's at 92. Joseph is at 71. Gareth is at 70. JT is at 61. Jared is at 39. Um, Alex is at 35. He just platinum something that I added to him that looked, I forget. Ugh. Just saw it too, darn. Um, Matthew's at 33. I'm at 24. Zach is only at 21. A little, little, little behind there, Zach. Uh, oh, a little, little sucky baby boy, Zach. Yeah, Noah, the builder's at 21. Wow, 42J is at 9. I think he broke his record from last time. There you go. Um, I'm just kind of reading the more important ones. Spider Packs is at 8 and BWOW's at 6. Yeah, BWOW hadn't played any games lately. B- when BWOW's, she's going to bed early. Although she's waiting on me right now. She keeps, mm. me, she keeps sending me text messages. Mm. But, Does she yeah, know she... you're with another woman? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, not yet, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it would be it would be three other ladies, but they they didn't show up. <laughs> uh-huh. So uh, yeah, so excellent, excellent backlog beat down, looking good. Definitely appreciate all you guys hanging in there and knocking this stuff out with us. So. Time for some community questions. We don't have too many of them tonight, but the ones we have are pretty good. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. We're going to start with the first one. MZ Nitro, he writes in, and he just simply says he misses CJ. So do we, MZ. So do we. Yep. (laughs) So... All right, uh, next up, we got uh, Ender writes in, and he says, with all the hype surrounding a certain recently released game, do you think that Sonic Frontiers will actually win Game of the Year? Underdogs like Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok might have a chance. It'll be difficult to beat the blue blur. Kalai, are you going to play some Sonic Frontiers? I am not. Did you hear the new, the new thing that came out about Sonic Frontiers? What's that? If you buy the like special edition, the one that comes with all of the DLC, it said, they said, they can't and said, you have to install the DLC before you play it or you will not be able to install the DLC later. That's weird. <laughs> is it broken? I, I know. They literally and the only reason why I knew about this is because people were tweeting it from their Twitter account. They literally came out and said, yeah, the DLC, if you do not install it, you will not be able to play it in the game. You have to install it before you start the game. But all later DLC, you'll be fine with. I was like, um, that's, that's not a, a good start that's to a game. That's a way to do it. <laughs> yeah. 
Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, um, I am not interested in playing with the blue blur. I'm all, I'm a pass. <laughs> the only Sonic you're going to play is the burger. Yep. Yep. So, um, actually I am not, I didn't even pick up God of War yet. I'm actually going to wait. I am practicing mega self-control in games right now. Yeah, Joe and I, I before. Joe and I were just talking about that. He's like, Kalai, you should really play God of War. I'm like, I never played a God of War. He's like, you should really? play the first God of War. I'll lend it to you. I said, you'd have to see me first. Yeah. Well, it's on PlayStation Plus Premium. Or PlayStation Plus, really. Because that's part of the instant game collection on PS Plus. Right. But, I, I, I mean, I almost bought the PlayStation when I had to renew, but you said, no, don't do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if, I don't think it's worth it for you, and I think that's part of what we're going to talk about tonight, too, is how it's not really worth it for everybody. Like, it, they have good months occasionally, but there's there's no rhyme or reason. It's not consistent. So, I don't know. I don't know that it's a good time yet. But, yeah, I will highly recommend it. I mean, I don't know if it'll resonate with you as much as it does. I mean, it, a good story is a good story. I think that God of War resonated more with me because because of the dad, you know what I'm saying, and father and son you know, aspect of it. I think that like there's something about that parental bond that really clicked with me, you know. And with this one, Kratos is kind of like he's not really a good dad, and he's not he doesn't really know how to be, and so it you kind of see this whole thing kind of unfold between him and Atreus, and that's pretty good. And so that's interesting because me and my dad, although we were good friends, we did the the father son bond isn't is not strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I had, see, I I had a very strong bond with my father. Me so, and my so father. It, might, it, it might really resonate with you. You know, I don't know. It's it's good. It's a again, a good story is a good story whether you're a dad or you're a parent or not. But I don't know. For me, it really resonated. But I'm a dad. And there's there's aspects where you can see Kratos is struggling, trying to form a relationship with his kid, but he doesn't know how. And I don't know. It's just it's just, it's very interesting. Outside of the fact that it's just a good action game, it's good. It's great combat too. So it's there. You might like it. You might not. In in the uh, in the previous God of War games, um, there were like little sex mini games. So I mean, you might want you might want to do those instead. You might be more into the wild, crazy, angry button mashing. Well, I got I pl- I played a lot of the first one, the original one. Yeah. But I played it on Vita. Oh. And Vita is not a very good place to play it. Um, I don't disagree with that. Oh, okay. I'm of two minds on that one. It's not the best place because that weird back touch thing that they put in there. Yes. Like if you rest your hands back there, it does it, it, it does some stuff here and there. But when it comes to a very quality game to play and a very good hack and slash action game to play on the Vita, it's great for that. But yes, the weird finger placement thing, because I rest my hands back there and the back touch always wants to grab a hold of boxes and do stuff with it. That's frustrating. If you could turn mm-hmm. that off, that'd be awesome. Yeah, right. So, but, yep. So, um, definitely play some God of War. It's good. Uh, as far as Elden Ring, you, you got into Elden Ring for a little while, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I got to get back to Elden Ring. Yeah, it's it, a good one. It was gifted to me. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I, I, I say that. I've seen it. I, was, I watched my son play it a little bit. He actually didn't really like it. It looked good. I watched my cousin play it. He showed me some videos he recorded. It looked good. I haven't actually played it, but I haven't. So, all right, next up, we got CJ in the house. He says, in the Loot Bros personal opinion, what is the best? Oh, my goodness. Teledildonics device to pair with a PSVR 2. Teledildo, is is that Teledildo? Is, is this in the Discord? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that word is, and, I, and I, like I don't know if the word dildo is hidden in it on purpose, or if there's a word that I'm just uneducated and don't know. It also, like, what's the best device 
uh, the Pair or the PS VR2. I'm gonna let you Google that word. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, teledildonics. The freak is a teledildonics. Oh my god, I am so afraid. Damn it, CJ, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say this well, since he brought up PSVR 2 that price it is as much as a console I'm going to have to let that one sit no, I, I, can't, I can't do that one. Oh, I found the Wikipedia page alright what is uh, teledildonic <laughs> <laughs> okay it's also known as a cyber dildonics. Is the name coined for a virtual sex encounters using networked electronic sex toys to mimic an extended human sexual interaction. Good lord. <laughs> I had a feeling. I told you I thought the word dildo was hit in there. <laughs> the term became known after technology critic and writer Howard Rheingold used it in his 1991 book, Virtual Reality. <laughs> Dear Lord, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm out on that one. I don't I don't, <laughs> know, I don't know anything about those type of peripherals. All right, well, let's uh, let's go to the next one there. Well, hang tight. Did you ever you ever watch the movie Demolition Man? Uh, probably. With, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yes, with the three set shells. Three seashells. Yes. Do you remember when him and Sandra Bullock went to his apartment so they could have sex, and they just put these little headsets on? And it makes these weird, you know, and he's like, what, what is this? I thought we were going to like, you know, blah, blah, blah. She's like, ugh, disgusting. No. And like, there's, so anyways, I'm assuming when he talks about his teledildonics, that's what he's talking about. Demolition Man style. <laughs> CJ, if you're not familiar with that, look it up. Demolition Man teledildonics. <laughs> that's going to be the name of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know down. what pairs well with that? What's that? Of a JJ. Oh, <laughs> she did that just for you, CJ. There you go. All right. <laughs> Gaz writes in and says, with Black Friday sales upcoming, are there any games or hardware you're looking to pick up? Well, what, you, I'll start with you, Clyde. Is any, you got, got your eye on anything for Black Friday this year? Oh, no. Not really. Like. I, the problem is, is I don't have time to play games right now. You yeah. know what I mean? So I am... So I didn't. I haven't picked up God of War, Call of Duty, or Gotham Knights yet. So if I find... A, if, if there's a good enough deal, I would imagine, you know, 10, 20 bucks off of some of those games. I, I would imagine God of War is going to be at least... I, mean, I would hold uh, off though from the Gotham sounds Knight. of it. I would hold off on Gotham Knights. I hear it's not great, but I watched Tricky play it and, and Tricky said it's it's a fun game. Well, Tricky it, it, also has a lot more money to burn. Yeah, but I mean I just I and, am going to get it eventually. Yes, I don't say not get it. I don't I think I would wait for at least fifty percent off because first of all, it's only like a six hour game. Mm. Yeah. I heard it was a six hour game. Oh, even better. Sixty hour platinum, but a six hour story. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> here's the weird part about it, because he was he was talking about it with me. As you play the game, you level up all four characters at the same time. Right. Which they I like can, that idea. Right. So you can you just like, swap any time and the work you did transfers across. Except you can't swap any time. Because what you don't level is their abilities. You can't get their abilities unless you go back and play each one and you have to fight three mini bosses and do something else to open up their abilities. So he switched characters to play somebody different on his second playthrough but he had to switch back because he couldn't use the glider which helped him get around the city. Hmm. It was the weirdest thing. That is very interesting. So, and then on top of that, it's not up to like he said that you can't play four player co op hmm. in a game that you that has four players. It's only two player co op. 
Sounds like this game's got some issues. Yeah, that's why I'm saying I don't know if it's worth the twenty dollars off. Like maybe fifty percent off. Maybe. Hmm. We'll wait then. I like I like you've convinced me to wait. Either way, I got my eye on it. If it was something it was a good sale on that one. Um, I bought the majority of the games that came out already this year that I was interested in. So like Dying Light will definitely be on sale. Elden Ring will be on sale. Um, Horizon Forbidden West will be on sale. I bought all those games already. So unfortunately, I won't need those. AEW um, Fight Forever is coming to Game Pass, so I don't need that one because I'm totally going to renew Game Pass just to play that game. So I don't know. I actually, Gareth, I, Gareth, I don't know this year. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to do as far as Black Friday goes. But I always buy games, and I always buy controllers because the controllers are usually marked down about twenty percent. And so I tend to pick up controllers for my kids for um, for uh, Christmas. I've actually already picked up one for Paxton. I found a deal on it. A really nice, nice brand new Spider-Man controller. So. Oh, that's one of the cool. actual, the actual. So whenever the Spider-Man console came out, they had the one that comes with the console, and then they had the one that has the spider design on it. So that one I didn't buy, but I found it on Marketplace, brand new, still in the box. So I don't know. I, I, I'll keep my eye out, but really, I think what I'm really interested in doing this year is seeing if the local game shops, game shops around town are going to be cutting, having like a Black Friday sale, like a percentage off of used stuff. That's probably where I'll spend the majority of my money this year. I mean, Black Friday, you were just talking about this. Black Friday is not like it used to be. Like, it's already started. Yeah, and, and isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's freaking, yeah, so like, oh, we were at Walmart the other day, and they're like Black Friday Chromebooks. They're like, like $79 right now. I'm like, I mean, that's a really good deal for a Chromebook, but it's like, dang, they've already they're already rolling the sales out. So like, it's not it's not exciting like it was years ago where you sat around. So let's have that conversation, Kali. Let's go. This is this this. We'll come back to finish these questions up, but this right here is the topic we need to cover. Black Friday, what a freak! Like it used to be, you go and you had Thanksgiving dinner, you spend time with your family, you get the big fat freaking newspaper that's like two and a half inches thick of all the the sales ads. Yeah. Everyone, yeah, and like it used to be, like you get two or three newspapers, so you got these big fat stacks, and then we everyone in the family is sitting around passing the ads around. Oh, you got a Best Buy. Oh, you got Walmart. Oh, you got Macy's. Oh, you got uh, blah blah blah. And then we'd pass them around, and then everybody would pick out what they wanted. You would go home, you'd go to bed, you'd get out in the morning because the store is only open till five. You get in line at your respective stores. Everyone would go set up a different spot. Respectfully. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And so like, it's like my brother would go to one store, I'll go to another. You tell me what you want, I'll tell you what I want. We go grab each other's stuff. And it was a game, man. It was fun. Now. It's freaking, well, then Black Friday started from, from 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 3. Then it started at midnight the night before. Then it was like, well, we're going to do Black Friday sales for a couple of days leading up to. Then it's like certain days, certain deals. I mean, what even is it anymore? The last year's Black Friday was less busy than a normal Sunday at Walmart. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, my family, my mother never partaked in the Black Friday sales. My mother's thought was she would be done shopping for Christmas by Black Friday. And so Christmas. that's and that's everybody's mentality. So like it's like the beginning of October. My sister's like, here's my list of stuff I want off of Amazon. Amazon's having a Black Friday sale. You should do it now. And I'm like, first of all, your stuff isn't on sale. I think one thing was two dollars off. I, second of all, they're going to have another sale. Yep. Yep. Oh. And that's another thing too. Like they're they're doing Black Friday now. They're making it this whole freaking this whole freaking month essentially. But but I mean realistically, the best deals are still going to be the night of or the night before. But again, now you can get everything online too. So it's like, what's the point of even going in the store? You can just buy it online. Yeah, I don't like going to the store. I like going to the store. I'm a little bit old school with that. It's fun. Uh, I know, but I just don't like to leave my house. <laughs> You know what? I have learned since now that I work from home, I don't like to be in my house. I love being in my house, but like I'm always finding an excuse to leave. 
<laughs> it's like, oh, I need something from the grocery store. Let me go. Oh, wait, I need to run across town and make a trade deal at a game store. Let's go. Oh, wait, what's that? Facebook Marketplace? Three hours? Let's, re- let's go. I'm no, always on the road. Not me. Not me. But also right now for for my knee, since I have this these two torn meniscus discs, I'm in, I'm in PT. So like three days a week, I'm like running out to do PT. You know, I'm coming home. I got to take care of the gym i gotta take care of the house i'm exhausted yeah i'm i've got a problem i'm always running i'm always in the streets i'm just like my grandfather always in the street always going to do something take it and see the kids have extracurriculars every day too so it's like go to school pick them up go home for an hour take them out go back it's just always running so, all right um we got games and game getting it's great it's my brother I always say his name backwards. It's games and games. But in my head, I always say games and games. Anyways, so we got, would you play VR, a VR game where the main playable character is a world-renowned proctologist? Also had an easy plat of a thousand patients served. Um, Well, VR makes me nauseous, so... (laughs) But I mean, if if there was easy trophies, I'd be a proctologist in VR. <laughs> that maybe that maybe maybe there's a teledildonics in the proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the title of an episode: teledildonics in a proctologist <laughs> simulator. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh. All right, and then finally, Diego writes in, and he asks, where is our year-long Loot Bros-sponsored Nitro sub? Do you know why he's asking that? Because that spam bot joined our group. Yeah, how did that he, even get in? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. It's, I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. So Tanner messaged me the other day, and he asked if I sent him something in Discord. I was like, no, <laughs> he goes because a gift bot or gift yeah a gift bot just gave me a year or whatever blah blah. blah. I was like, nah, I don't know. That might be spam. I was like, and I gotta be honest, I'm very um, Discord dumb. Like I don't know how to do stuff in it. I tried to put a poll in there the other day and failed miserably. I kept fumbling it up. I was like, you know what? Screw this. I did it once before. I couldn't do it today. Yeah, you have to you have to actually get a program to do it. And I think I had a program and. I don't remember it. There's a way to do it. Like there's like a a command you can do to to load the the poll, but I couldn't get the answers to populate correctly. It was just it was a mess. So Discord's a little too much for my simple brain. So no, I don't know how to create spam bots. I don't know how to let spam bots in. I don't know how to get spam bots out. Like I think I deleted it, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> That's why we keep Kali around. Glyde's our Discord gal. She makes sure that it doesn't suck. Yeah, we've been having some good conversations over on our Discord. It really has. A lot of the conversation has moved from Facebook to the Discord, so it's been very nice to see that thing popping off. So, which has some I, great I, memes in there. I, I like it a little bit better because I think it's more personable. Because I feel like it doesn't get lost as much. No. Well, I use my Facebook for my. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying so hard not to yawn in the microphone. Like I keep seeing you yawn, and I yawn, and you yawn. So I've been, I've been, I use my personal Facebook for for business, and so for me, it's like it, there's like business stuff all day long, and then there's like a sprinkle of the game stuff in there. So I still like having it there because it's like it gives me a break from the you know whatever, but. Yeah, definitely Discord's been popping off. It's been great to have. So I'm I'm pretty stoked that it's growing. Uh and as for your um Nitro sub, Diego, you're just gonna have to uh hold out hope that the gift bot will choose you next. Which I did get a I I actually pay for Nitro. I decided to pay for it because I was trying to upload a picture of uh Marvel Snap because we've been playing that and helping each other out. And apparently it was too big and I couldn't figure out why. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try the Nitro, uh, the $10 sub so I can, you know, get upload bigger pictures, which I should be. <laughs> there it goes. She's falling apart. 
I am falling apart. I should be able to like boost our server too. Oh sweet. Yeah, I haven't tried the nitro the but I don't I don't know what I don't even know how to do regular stuff, so I don't I don't know that I need to know nitro yet. I don't know. One day I'll figure uh, it out. You might want to try it just to help me boost our server because boosting our server increases the quality of our video that we can upload or that we can stream. Oh, okay. What I like, I actually prefer I actually prefer streaming onto our Discord rather than to Twitch because you're not going to have the commercials that you have on Twitch. You're not going to have the random bots. You're not going to have um you know, like you're not going to have a lot of the problems or the lag that you experience in Twitch on your Discord. So I find it a little bit better to stream over there. Oh, I dig it. I don't do too much streaming these days, but yeah, I'm down. We'll, we'll figure it out. So, all right, that's actually all the community questions we have. Kali, we are actually getting towards the end of our time together. So instead of having a real big official, you know, this week's official topic, I wanted to just real briefly kind of gauge your interest on Game Pass offerings and I know you didn't re-up for the PlayStation Plus Premium or whatever, but I did. I kind of, I almost didn't do it, but I broke down and I, I re-up on the ninth. And so I just kind of want to see what are what are some Game Pass goodies that are going around right now that are worth worth, worth playing. Now I do know that AEW Fight Forever is coming to Game Pass, and to me, that is worth subscribing to Game Pass and checking it out. Hundred percent. Because I really want this game to be great, but I have this sneaking suspicion that it's not going to be great. And now that it's coming to Game Pass, there's no reason for me not to check it out. Okay, so luckily I have my Game Pass right here because I can Sweet. look at it on my computer. You know, we got Return to Monkey Island. Okay. Is that, is that like a remaster or is that the old version? Or is that a new one in the series? Uh, you it was Monkey Island. It's got to it's got to be re- at least remastered because it's got gotcha. 4K ultra high de- def. Interesting. Cool, cool. Cool. Um, let's see. We also oh, Gunfire Reborn. That's a fantastic game. It's a looter shooter that was recently okay. added. There you go. Um, let's see, Frog Detective. <laughs> we have Persona Five Royale added. Very nice. Very nice. For the uh, for the horror people, the Amnesia Collection. Ah, man, that's actually not very good. But I know that's like renowned as okay. Let me let me preface that. That is like renowned as like excellent old school horror. Like a lot of games have been influenced because of that. But I played them when they first ported them to console, and they played like crap. I did not think they were great. Okay, uh, but I mean you- they exist, and it's good they're there. The new Plague Tale is on there. That oh, that's right. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's, that's another one I haven't bought yet. Vampire Survivors is on there, which we just talked about. Is. Somebody was yep. playing it. Yep. Come oh, coming December twelfth, we have High on Life. I want to play that game so bad. I would love to hear your thoughts on that one. Because you know who it's from. Yeah, the uh, Rick and Morty guys. Yes, I love Rick and Morty. Um, also, you can play Skyrim. I must, I must plug Skyrim. Gotcha. Uh, see what else? I mean, you can play Doom 64, Horizon, Halo Infinite, which, by the way, did you see what came out finally on Halo Infinite? No. It must be a year to the day that the game came out, because it was, I think it was 11-8 of last year that the game dropped, or very close to 11-8, and this year on 11-8, they dropped the co-op campaign finally yeah that's awesome i i i I hate they just they canned the split screen you know campaign but i guess dropping co-op at least at long line only is uh better than nothing it doesn't bother me because i i I didn't really like co-op with like i don't like save screen co-op yeah see i've played every single halo in split screen co-op so for me it was kind of like I was really looking forward to it, and that's how I was going to play it with my son. 
but it, also because we got rid of one of the Xboxes. So I only have one Xbox now. So for us, we're not going to be able to play together. And I was Well, like, that's you know not what? true. I mean, I guess I could play it on PC. He could play it on Xbox. Yeah, there you go. So that, that is an option. So maybe. We'll see. I'm, I'm going to subscribe for AEW, so maybe I'll play Halo Infinite while I'm there. Mm-hmm. So, um... We also have Ghost Song, which I don't know what that is. Uh, and then we do have perks. Do you guys get perks? Um, we've got the stars program now. There, I don't know what all comes with it anymore. But... I I don't. Okay. Uh, so we got a uh, secret neighbor has uh, his a sports bundle you can claim. Fallout 76 has an anniversary bundle for the PC. Rogue Company has a Saints perk pack. Um, oh, okay, and the Fallout 76 for the pit is also on console. Evil has a housewarming bundle. Ooh, Dead Space has an add-on bundle. Free. On Game Pass. What does that give you? Customize your Dead Space gameplay experience with the add-on bundle. This bundle contains some previously released DLC to help you better survive the horrors and await Isaac Clark. Huh. That's cool. Uh, Apex Legends stuff, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey packs, Need for Speed Heat, Joe's new favorite game, uh, Halo Infinite bundle, Deathloop bundle, Warframe, Quake, Minecraft. So we get like... Uh, I kind of like the perks because especially like every once in a while we get some like really like really good perks like free free nitro at one point things like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'll jump over on the PlayStation Plus side. It's it's very it's good. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like we just got all the Yakuza's. There's all the Assassin's Creeds. I mean, we got. Yeah, the Dragon Quest games, Dragon Quest Builders is on here, Dragon Quest Heroes is on here. We got the Medium on here, which is really good. Um, yeah, there's lots of good stuff on there. Like, you know, we got the Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope, and Man of Medan on there, which I believe the other one is on there as well. Um, no, 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 it's not. That's the first two. The third one's not on there. But, I mean, there's tons and tons of good stuff. And then we keep getting, like, we got Siphon Filter 1, which, by the way, as it stands right now, our next game of the month club is going to be Siphon Filter 1 because it is the current highest voted game on our poll in our Facebook group. I thought it was Siphon Filter 2. Uh, no, it's Siphon Filter 1. It's Ratchet. You got Siphon Filter, uh, Ratchet and Clank 2016, and Deathloop. Those were, it was a three way tie between those on the Patreon. And so we turned it over, put a poll in the Facebook group. We've had we only had 14 people vote in it. So it's not a ton of voting. But if you take the eleven or so people that voted in the Patreon and then these 14 right here, I mean, you know, right now Save and Filter has got 58% of the votes. So if you're listening to the show, I'm gonna give you to the end of the day on Monday when this posts. Okay. If this hasn't changed, then Siphon Filter it is. And then we'll we'll start our thirty days from there. So it'll be did you middle pin, of December. Did you pin it? I did. Oh. It's it's in I'm curious. Yeah. Um Yeah, what else are you getting for the So we just got like we got like Alex Kid hold on I'm trying to use my mouse and my PlayStation G's. We got like Alex Kid, you know, lawn mowing simulator. Um, we got the Man Eater. I mean, I'm just kind of jumping around, just point, just kind of naming out a handful of good games: Outer Wilds, Worms Armageddon, which is really awesome. Toy Story 2, Resident Evil Director's Cut for PS1. Um, you know, we got Grand Theft Auto by City, you know, the Definitive Edition. That's pretty awesome. And then here in a couple of days, we're getting ready to get um, a whole slew of games. We're getting uh, Skyrim Special Edition. We're getting Rainbow Six Siege, all the Kingdom Hearts games, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then however many games are actually inside them, nine. So, yeah. 
tons of games. Uh, we got Odd World Soulstorm coming on there. We got the Division Two coming on there. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, what remains of Edith Finch? Uh, a couple of different Earth Defense Force games. Oni Chimbara Origin going on there, which I believe I played that back in the day. I can't remember if that's a new game or if that's a remaster of an old game. Uh, the original first three Ratchet and Clank games, but those are PS3, so they're going to be streamable. Um, plus Deadlocked and Tools of Destruction. So you're talking five Ratchet and Clank games. So, I mean, it's decent, but there's no... The thing that's frustrating is the premium isn't... doesn't Like every month, it doesn't offer PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, or PSP games. That was what was promised. What they're doing is they're giving you PS3 games, but like those are the streamable games. And that's not what people want. You know, we don't want PS3 games streaming. We want native downloads. So I don't know. I, a lot of the, I've been reading a little bit about this. A lot of the fans are pretty frustrated with the, the premium. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Like one month you'll get like, you, you might you one or two months in a row with PS1, PSP games. You haven't gotten any PS2s that I've seen. And then you'll go like two or three months without any of them. And they're adding stuff, but I don't know. It's just To me, it's just kind of like putting the Ratchet and Clank games on there. Those were already on PS Now before. So it's like, you're not really... I don't feel like you're really giving me something different. And now the extra tier, the middle tier, it's jam up. Because you're getting... Like I said, the Tom Clancy games, the Kingdom Hearts games, Skyrim. I mean, there's like friggin' 25 games that they're adding on here. So what do you think about how it compares to Game Pass? I think for quantity, it, it it's always better. And I do believe that like the quality of a lot of the games, especially the first party games, all the Ratchet and Clank games on here, it's really good. But it's kind of like, okay, Game Pass still gets these day and date games. And I've always been the one that argued against that. But to me, it's like it's an optics thing, right? It's like that just comes off as better, you know? There's so much quality on this list. But like The Division 2, it's on there. But man, like The Division has been a $5 game, you know, for a year. You know, two years. You can go. You can go to any GameStop, any mom and pop shop, get the Division Two for five bucks. So I was okay. just reading a really interesting article. It was talking about how Game Pass re- recoup its money. They were talking about that their money doesn't come from the hardware sales, and it doesn't right, come from Game Pass. It comes from the accessories that people buy. The, the the controllers, you know, the things like that. That's why you see so many different things coming out of Xbox like that. And yeah. they really do want it to be uh, centered towards their members. And I know Joe makes the argument that, oh, you know, this is going to kill, you know, any kind of developers because they're not making money, blah, blah, blah. But I really think that this makes more money for the developers. I mean, so I listen to Sager Symbols a lot, and they break down the numbers when they're available. I mean, and the math doesn't check out. I mean, just the most recent numbers where game where Xbox had said they made like two point nine billion dollars um, in revenue for Game Pass, but it's like, okay, when you divide that by the amount of subscribers that you had, I think it came down to like, I'm just spitball numbers. I don't remember. But it was something like like. Most people or all of the average was less than seven or eight dollars a person because you have so many people who get it on deal or bought years of it on deal. Um, you know, you get the first month for a dollar kind of thing, whatever. So then, you know, there was a lot of he, he broke it all down. It's like that means the majority of people aren't paying full price for it. And you got to think about if your first party games cost 100, 200 million dollars to make which is getting to be the kind of the average price for a big triple A game. Like if you're rolling out one of those a month, like you said you were, which they're not, but they're, they're still developing them. So they're still, they're developing that cost. They're not making that money back. And you, you got to think about how much money they're paying. Like AEW, 
fight, uh, fight forever. People like me who have been waiting on this wrestling game to come out, who are going to play it on Game Pass and not buy it initially, maybe not ever. I mean, they're definitely losing that sale. So, I don't yeah, know. but you were if you were going to buy it, you weren't going to buy it on Game Pass any. You weren't going to buy it on on uh, Xbox anyways. Right. I, if I was going to buy it, I was just going to buy it on PlayStation. But Correct. So <laughs> what's going to happen is you're going to play that game. You're going to decide you like it. And you're going to say, you know what? I really want to make trophies. And then you're going to buy it from the buy it on PlayStation, which gives the developer money. So if it's good, and that's the right. kicker, though. And this is this is one of, this is one of those weird cases where, like, it could very possibly not be good. A lot of the rumblings are there's been a lot of developmental issues with this particular game. I'm excited about it, but like we've heard, there's been some articles come out that said like that the developers and then the people spearheading the project that work with AEW and work for AEW, they haven't been getting along. That there, it's this game could potentially be not great. But so have you have you played like a Plague's Tale? No, no. Oh, really? I played the first one. I beat the first one. Loved it. Yeah. Okay. I, that's I what I meant. I did you play it at yeah, all? I haven't played yet. No, okay, okay. And you played it. How did you play it first? Uh, I bought the game. You bought the game, so you didn't play it on. You didn't try it on. X- no. All right. Yeah. So I find that like I'll try games on Xbox, and I'll be like, "Oh, this game's really good," but you know, I kind of want to be able to play it on the go or when I'm sitting on the couch. So then I'll go right, play it on. Right. I'll go buy it on a different system. That developer which, just got double dipped the money. Good. Yeah. yeah, I think it's great, and I love. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think these subscription services are great for back catalog stuff. You know, to me, it's like they're the the day and day thing is very interesting because the, the what we've always been told from the gaming industry is they make their their money in the first two weeks. That's when they make the majority of their money. And if you take that away because you put on a subscription service, it's like okay, well, you got to offer a ton of money. And re- to replace that, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like if you're gonna, if I'm gonna go get your game to put on my service, I gotta give you a big check. You would think. And so then it's kind of like, okay, well, what happens if people don't buy your game on the other console? You know, because they just go over it, or or like they don't buy the game at all. It's like, is that a, is that good? I don't know. I, we'll never know because they're never gonna really tell us the numbers. All we're gonna hear is the. And then that's what they do. They market it now. They say, oh, well, you, this is how many people played our game. It doesn't mean that many people paid for it or pay, even paid for the service. Or like people like you, Kali, who like got like two or three years up front for a dollar, you know? Oh, so, I'm past my two years already. I've been paying right. monthly, but I'm all right paying monthly because, again, for the price of what I'm paying, this is what I equivalent to. Like, I want all of, I want Gears of War. I want Halo. Halo is $60. I could pay sixty dollars for a game, or I could pay sixty dollars for what fifteen four months of game pass yep so i'm getting so I'm getting my money's worth, and I've found a lot of like little indies in there that I would never play that I've played Heck yeah well I mean I had game pass for since it came out up until recently, <laughs> so like I've paid for it for years, and I never use it. You know, so I mean, there's and here's the other thing with Game Pass because everybody's like, "Oh, Game Pass is so bad." Game Pass is so bad. When you say that, you don't look at what reality is, because you're taking to you're 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 thinking, "Oh, adults, adults, adults." Well, you got to remember that gaming spans generations. Kids play games. And kids come home after being at school and say, Mommy, Mommy, I want the latest item. I want the latest Call of Duty. Or I want the latest, you know, game. Halo. Now, or the latest systems. Microsoft is making it more easier for people who cannot afford that three, four, five hundred dollars up front. You know, how many no, times... I think- when it comes to accessibility and the, and the value, I think it's amazing. Both the, both subscriptions are amazing. Even if I was a kid right now, it'd be the greatest thing in the world because you're just like, okay, yeah. When I was growing up, we might got a game or two a year, four on a good year. 
you know, like I buy four games a day now, <laughs> like freaking buying the, I bought, oh my gosh, I've been posting pictures. I've probably bought, I've probably picked up 30 games in the past week, two weeks. Right. Except that Xbox does remember that, uh, pay, pay as you go system. The, oh yeah. From the console. Yeah. 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 So, so that's cool too. Yeah, so like parents who really can't afford to spend six hundred dollars for their kid to have the latest Xbox, with and you know you got to remember, three four hundred dollars gets you the system. It doesn't get you any games. You know, when we were kids, you bought a Nintendo, you got Super Mario, and Duck Hunt. So these parents can go go out and like, you know, buy an Xbox and pay twenty five dollars a month and get access to a lot of games that their kids can play. Heck yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's great for stuff like that. You know, I, I question long term for the industry personally, just because you don't know, you know, I don't mm-hmm. know. But I think, you know, for for me, I'm a physical game creator anyways. I carry these subscriptions. Like I said, I just recently got rid of uh, Game Pass. Um, but I carry these subscriptions. And I don't use them, so there's that. <laughs> I know, and I think, you know, X, uh, PlayStation came out and said, oh, we're never going to do that. We can afford that. Can't afford that. Yeah, you can afford that. You know, because you, you don't just have a gaming degree. You know, you, I understand that, oh, Microsoft is so much bigger than Sony. Well, Microsoft has Windows and computers. Sony has TVs. And sound systems and headsets and, you know, a lot of other things. They have an entire movie industry. So they can afford to put money into into their gaming division. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the argument is they can they make money on their games. So until they don't, they're going to fight it. They're going to, you know, they're going to keep selling them. So. I don't know. They, I, I like it because I get to play games that like I would never normally play. Like, am I gonna like this? Oh yeah, I am. And games that I like, there were games that I like really wanted, and I was like, oh yeah, I kind of want that game. And they come out on Game Pass. I dig it. I dig it. Well, we'll see. We'll see how things go. I think right now Game Pass still, if, if nothing else, they've got the mind share. I think that when it comes to optics, it is the most favorable subscription service. I think they did it first. Well, they didn't do it first, but they did it best first. And Sony's still bringing up the rear trying, but I just don't think they quite got it. And their inconsistencies with everything just doesn't seem to. It's not doing it. This is not doing it. So. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna get here, Kalai, is there Anything else you want to add? Anything you want to say to before we bounce? No, come join us and hang out in the Discord because we have a lot of fun. That's right. That's right. It's a pimping good time, as they say, guys. This has been Loot Bros Podcast. Thank you so much, Clyde, for showing up. All the other guys suck for not making it. Um, thank you, guys, patrons, for all your support. I'll be pumping out some extra content. In the next week for the Patreon, I've got a couple of cool things I've been working on. And, you know, my mornings are kind of slow you know, with my with my business. And so I I tend to get in in the mornings and get some content created, get things kind of worked up and working on editing some videos and putting that stuff out there. So hopefully I will keep up what I'm doing with my my trajectory, my pace and keep dropping stuff for you guys. If you are interested in joining the Patreon, you can get in for as little as a dollar. Please go check it out. Lots of lots of good stuff there. Good Lord. I mean, the amount of content we have on the Patreon right now is pretty freaking outstanding. I mean, we've had it for a year, a little over a year. We've put out 24 episodes that you're guaranteed to get, not to mention the monthly bonus episodes. Sometimes it's one, two, three, four. And then, of course, you get the actual, the main show each and every week. So I dare to say there's over a hundred pieces of content on there right now. I think actually 90, 98, nope, 91. So there you go. It's getting close to a hundred. 
So you can get in on that for as little as a dollar. So please go check out the Patreon. Thank you, Kalai, for coming tonight. And we will holler at you guys next time.